Good morning, welcome back to the channel. Um, as you can see, we're back out in the woods again for a little whale camp. Um, the weather today, um, when I just left the vehicle, as you've seen, it was minus three. Um, and if anybody wants to put that in context, what day it was, it's the day England plays um, France. So it's a, a nice freezing cold Saturday. Yeah, so I decided to come back to the wood that uh, I did the hammock camp in and a little um, uh, Dutch oven uh, stew uh, because I found a lovely wee place, a couple of cracking little woods down in down in Dorset, but unfortunately Dorset, Christchurch, Bournemouth, all those areas has got uh, laws against open fire still that will run until 2025 now, totally get it, that was because there was a lot of uh, fires last year uh, with the hot weather and people quite frankly being irresponsible with um, barbecues etc so that's um that's in place now until 2025 so i'm now in wiltshire uh and back in this wood here which doesn't have those restrictions right so the tent we're going to be looking at today is the one tigris uh rock fortress tent it's a four to six person tent um it describes but if you looked at the actual diagram of the six person part you, you wouldn't put six people in there uh, it's not a, a canvas tent it's another one of those dyneema ones which is um, 70 i think it said it was with a 3000 hydrostatic head uh, on it and it's a normal tp sort of shape and it comes with the um, uh, fireproof uh, chimney chimney opening that you can put a, a wood burning stove in so I've got a wood burning stove, um, it doesn't have a name, it's pretty much one of those branded ones that a lot of people sell. You can actually pick this one up <laughs> on B&Q's website if you go to uh, www.diy.com, they're on there. Um, probably a wee bit more expensive uh, than you would get it direct from other places if you go through Amazon, they sell it as well. Um, we'll go through the stats and weights and sizes when I uh, start putting the tent up. Uh, and then we'll do the burner. Uh, I've also got the Dutch oven with us again uh, and we're going to be cooking a curry. Um, yeah, Sandra will be down later on today once she's finished um, and joining us and spending the night. Now the temperature tonight, um, there has a possibility of snow and it's going to be about minus five. But I have been assured that the hot tent and the um, burner will keep us about a nice happy 20 degrees uh, we've got the, the heavy duty sleeping bags with us as well so we, we should be fine we've got a couple of one tigris um, uh, cot beds which we'll be trying out for the first time yeah so a bit of a lug down here it was um, the car has parked uh, about a kilometre and a half away uh, and this is my first trip down so I'll be heading back up when Sandra gets here to bring down the timber that we'll be burning um, it's under the logs and that will be burning and the food yeah so yeah it should be a, a good little experience cracking little wood this i do do like it um hopefully everybody's watching the football tonight that's a gamble i took um so we don't get too many intrusions or told to move on that would be the worst thing but i doubt that very much yeah cracking little place this is a bit chilly when you stop you do start to feel it so i'm gonna get shifty on get this uh get the tent up uh, and as I'm doing it I'll uh, just point out its features etc and then I'll stick the, the, the wood burner in as well. I uh, won't be lighting it until later on this evening or I won't be lighting it until we actually need it. Uh, but yeah looking forward to this one. But it is cold, that is nippy cold. Right, I'll have a look at the uh, One Tigris Fortress hot tent. Right. Uh, comes in a nice little bag. Um, the weight of it, this bag here is, I think it's 9.4 uh, pounds. I think it is. Uh, the tent's diameter, I think it's about 12, 12 feet, and the height is nearly um, 7 or 8 feet. You can, the pole is adjustable, so you get with it a set of poles and a bag. Um, The atypical one tigris green pegs. 
and then you'll have the tent itself and inside the bag it gives you quite clear um, instructions uh, how to put it up so basically if you look there you just pin the two doors back in front at the angle that you want it to go for the entrance and then uh, just put the pole in and then start pegging it out for there. I have put it up, but I've got a wee test of putting it up. Uh, it doesn't take long at all. So, guy ropes, you get 10 guy ropes, they're not attached to it, you have to attach them yourself. And as we found out, um, you'll see it's on little plastic hoops that you can slide up and down. And a couple of them came off because we're not very good at tying knots. I think we've rectified that. So, let's get on and we'll get this tent up. There's yeah, your little for your stove when you're using it, and that will come down. As I said it's uh, the normal ripstop sort of nylon that you've got on it. Uh, it's 3000 hydrostatic head on it. Yeah. It's, it's a fair wee bit of rain. Um, yeah. Both doors, the doors can um, open from the top or from the bottom and the bad news is it's not YKK zips I know everybody mentions that when they're doing the reviews it's not a YKK zip yeah, so open up the back here or shall I keep it shut? in fact I'm going to keep it shut just now because I'm going to move my stuff in and I'm going to get the timber right so that's the hot tent up it's now time to get the um, the wood burner in. Right, the details on this, um, there's so many vendors sell it, as I've said, don't know um, if it's actually got a, a main supplier, so I don't know the name of it. Um, things about it is, it's not the lightest in the world, it's definitely not a titanium um, wood burner, it is solid. Right. So this one's got, so this is a tent stove from Boutique Camping. That's the suppliers. Uh, as I said, you can pick it up several places. It comes in a nice handy little bag. <laughs> the unit itself, complete. Yeah, it's 12 kilograms. That is um, pretty hefty. Uh, inside it, you store all the, um, the flue pieces. So you have eight of these flue pieces in it, uh, which takes up to 2.25 metres um, on the bottom here, on the base, which I'll just show you. You've got pop-out legs that it can sit on. And it's quite noisy. Right. And, um, here's your front for letting the air in. Little glass window you have to install yourself. Uh, and of course, eight pieces in here. Now, the bigger ones that I've seen, uh, the more expensive ones, sorry, that I've seen, they've got um, like baffles on the back, they're really light, there's a lot of gaps. So I watched a few videos and you can see a lot of heat, smoke, flame coming out. And when you listen to some of them talking, they do say that there's um, a fair bit of smoke gets inside the tent sometimes. And you've got to be really...
cautious with the old carbon monoxide. But with this one here, it's straight in, straight up and out. Um, we've got a tray in the bottom here, I'm taking out the coals. I do believe I'm making an assumption here, that's why this hasn't got a baffle on it, because the air's just, will go in when you're letting it in, uh, straight up and out. On the top here, it has got uh, like a grill area for putting your, your kettle on, which I know Sandra's bringing with us, with a, a wee whistling kettle, that should be quite fun. Uh, and also, um, I'll take these out. It comes with attachable attachable grills on the side. I know what I mean by grills, it's just grills. Really noisy. Uh, it's just grills for um, setting pots and cups on it. I, I, I don't believe for a minute it conducts any sort of, maybe conduct a bit of heat, but it's more for stowing stuff on when you're when you're cooking with it, uh, and obviously for removing so people don't you can remove it so people don't walk into it. Right, so the hole's about there. Yeah, the the lightweight ones are for what they are. They are really expensive. Um, there is one. Uh, I can't remember the name of the chap. Grizzly someday, I think it was, did one that's uh, one you can get for £95 and then shipping's another £40. And it's got glass down the side. Looks quite good. Again, but it's got one of those roll up flues I don't like. You know, the one that's held together with Jubilee clips. Um, there's something about that that sort of um, doesn't sit right with me when it comes to tents and flammable things and especially when the flu itself gets so hot. Right. You can put this anywhere really. I'm just gonna sit it here for the time being I think if you can still see it. Well, looks like my woes with this GoPro is getting worse. Um, so that was the first battery in there. I've literally got about five minutes recording on it and it came up with a battery low powering off and it still said it's 77% on it. GoPro original battery. Uh, I have no joys with GoPro, so yeah, need to come up with something. But it's pretty here today. I was trying to show you when it cut out. Yeah, so in the little fortress tent here, I've got a cot bed, a little seat. And when you look at it with the cot bed in, I'm sure you can take the legs off and drop it down a little bit. I think you could probably only get maximum two, three people in here possibly with cot beds. I know Sandra's got her cot bed, little chair there. That's just one of those generic ones you can buy off of Amazon. They're twenty quid. Uh, they're not lightweight, but. To do the business. Yeah, so good to have a little tent you can stand up in. But yeah, interesting. Why they say they can get six in here. I think it's six lying on the floor and hair and bone. Yeah, hair and bone you want to call it. it looks more like a a wishbone type scenario and have your smallest children down in the end.
Right, this is going to be quite difficult now. Um, yeah, the batteries aren't lasting long on anything. It must be really, really too cold. I'm not really feeling it, a bit damp, but it's, it's also a bit cold. Right, so we're just going to crack on and go through what we're going to do for the curry. Sandra's on her way. Uh, she'll be here shortly. So the first thing I'm going to do is the naan bread. So down here we have plain flour. Like instant fried yeast, some sugar, that's just to add to the yeast to help it along its way a bit. Some milk, and that's got, uh, no it says extra virgin olive oil, it's actually garlic one. And then we've got some onion seeds to mix in there. So I'm going to use a burner, just heat up some water, activate the yeast, let that sit, add it to the other ingredients and mix it in. Then I'm going to get a fire going, uh, and then I'm going to put the Dutch oven next to the fire just to get it warmed up a little bit and then going to prove the naan bread in there first. Okay, so I've got half of the um, plain flour. Just get put a wee touch of salt in it. Now the yeast I don't know bubbling a little bit but not as much as I'd like. Again it's just doing a little well in the middle. And I think it's I think it's cooled down really too quickly. No, it's still warm ish. I'll give that another couple of minutes. No, it's bubbling a little bit so we'll go for what it is. I'm conscious that I'm running out of time. So a bit of the yeast in there. Some olive oil, garlic in it. Just give that a little mix to the note. Then we'll just add flour to it when required. And then we'll get the milk in. So that's it springs back now. So that's been worked enough. So we'll get the fire on now and get it in the Dutch oven and get it all proved out. So I'm just gonna heat that up a little bit. So it's got some residual heat and then I'll put in the um put in the naan bread to prove a little bit. Yeah. Well, I was expecting Sandra to be here, but <laughs> don't tell me she's got lost again. Here we go. Right. Here we go. I'm going to chop some onions up now. How big do you want the onions? Mm -hmm. How big do you want the onions? Oh, finally chopped one. Finally chopped one. Yeah, fine, chop the Okay. Let's see how fine we can do this. It's not going to be overly fine because this is not the knife I'm used to. Feels like I'm cutting the tree down. This is a really thick knife. <laughs> We haven't acquainted yet this me and this knife yet. We're not used to it. That'll do. That will do. Apparently we're going to be doing chilies, garlic and the ginger as well. But, oh. So nan breads are in, ready made one bit. These are the other ones, so you can see that they're all puffing up, so we'll flip them over. Oh, slightly 
charcoal, charcoal -y. bit hot down that side. Give me a quick cook on that side. What I'll do is adjust this and bring this up a wee bit. Because that's burning. Oh, this is very fresh. I can't get any pressure on it until we're going to have to chop it. And with the onion. And sweat these off. So, first one, it's turmeric. Cumin in there. And a good old smoked paprika. Right, we'll all stick in the star anise, etc. later on. We won't do that just now. And then it's garam masala. Good wee bit of that. Give that a good mix in. A good strong whiff of spices in there. I'll let that get back up to the heat again. I'll just put another log on it. I'll cook off a bit more. Yeah, so just cooking off the ginger, the garlic, the onion, no spices. Start to smell like a curry now. Just going to add the tomato puree. So Sandy, excuse there's no faces on camera, she actually found us. She didn't need escorted. Not today. Not today. Right, so we're gonna let this cook off a bit more until it becomes like a, a ball. And then once it's become a ball, then we'll take it out and then we'll do our chicken. Now the chicken. It's just chicken marinated in yoghurt, lemon, um, normal spices, pep um, cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper, was it cayenne pepper, what do you call it? Smoked paprika, garam masala, uh, yoghurt, and I'd say the lemon, didn't I? What else? The garam masala, yeah, just everything I've put in there before. I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen what's actually been marinated, but been, that's been marinated for a couple of days. Right, so let's get the chicken in. Excuse the noise behind us, eh? and that's Sandra trying to fight with her um, cot bed.
Yeah. Maybe not hot enough in there just yet. See you in a second. Take it back out, get them into here, and then we're going to make the sauce. Stay away from it. Yeah, in case you're wondering, we did forget to bring the, um, the big wooden spoon. Right, so chicken back out, and just added a bit of the old hot sauce in there, and this will be back in again. As I said, you would blend all this down, but we don't have that luxury. But what we do have is a tiny of plum tomatoes. Maybe smudge any water in that, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That and we'll just leave that to steam off a little bit. Yeah, just add in a bit of coconut in there, coconut milk as well. It's sort of all not congealed in the tin, but it just doesn't want to come out, and it's not warm enough in here to. Um, Separate it. Chicken back in. Give that a little start. That's looking good. Bay leaf. I think these are local into the bay leaves you've got here. And put the star anise in there, which we'll fish out later on. Right, I've only put two bits of star anise in there, so whoever gets it, it's a lucky one. I think she's done. You're both recording me eating again. Mm-hmm. So how was it? It's really nice. I'm definitely having seconds and maybe thirds. You have got it on your face, you know that. <laughs> no? Yeah. That's got to be the quietest whistle. <laughs> I think it's from years of being in and out of the camping kit. Yeah. No, I think it's my old now anyway. Yeah. Can't see you there. Put your phone on. How hot is it in here now? It's, it's rather warm. I'm not going to complain. Warm. I might not be saying the same at five o'clock in the morning, mind, but at the moment I'm not complaining. No, it's uh, 32 degrees in here. <laughs> it's not quite 32. It's on that up there, maybe at the top. But yeah, but it's... I would not be sunset on the beach job, mate. That's 32 degrees. It's not that. Fancy, you know, that's a bit.
There's this. Oh, look it's at nice. I can't. You can't pick that up, but that is red hot. The base of that. It's bright red here, yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Um, that's a little um, hot tent adventure finished. I'm just I'm shooting some drone footage of the surrounding trees and um, fields and stuff like that. God, I love these trees. Yeah, the forest is quite busy this morning. And, um, a lot of people out walking their dogs Sunday morning style. So I took the drone out. Three batteries lasted approximately four minutes. That's how cold it was. It was minus six um, last night here uh, in the hot tent. It was between 20 degrees, and I think the most we had it up to was um, about 32, which is quite interesting. But it's really good. I've got some timber left, so that was three bags of logs we brought. Um, we cooked with some. Um, and the rest of it just hit the tent up and then when we went to sleep uh, we let it go out before we went to sleep and then about six o'clock this morning put it back in but yeah everything was good thermal rest on the beds um, and wrap uh, down 600 sleeping bags toasty really toasty that was actually quite nice condensation was a bit of a pain um, i went on the cot bed which kept me well off the ground. In fact, we did notice with the cot beds, if you're off the ground to a certain height, you get full heat. The side of the tent next to you is dry uh, with the heat, but Sandy didn't put the legs on her, so she was on like the low level. And the um, the actual condensation got her bag a couple of times. Uh, she got a wee bit wet, so yeah, that was lessons learned there. Put the legs on, keep yourself high when you're in the hot tent, you won't get any condensation on you but there was plenty of condensation this morning but cleared that really quickly bags got dried out really really quickly so no great issues there yeah so gonna head back get some breakfast hopefully she was going to put it on and then it's um pack up head back to the car so i'll show you how quick it takes to take the tent down once we're finished and then that'll be it again guys um if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I just can't get around the algorithms on, on the things. It's not that I'm only entertaining 245 people just now. I get notifications on my own private um, private YouTube address, or YouTube site, and um, I get it nine days after I've posted a video. So there's something, something not right. I don't know if you can see that there, but there was a quite a lot of ice uh, built up around the base of it on the helmet, and it is. I believe it's starting to snow. I've just seen it pop up on my phone. It's going to start snowing soon. All right. So it takes a couple of minutes to drop it and pack it away. The cooker slightly different uh, obviously the first time we've used it the the uh, smokestack was stuck on the actual uh, burner but I've got that off now so I've got that packed up and then it feels like a bit sleety rain I don't know so much snow and then I'll get out of here oh, that is chilly right so catch up with our next adventure sometime later on probably Maybe Christmas Day or New Year's Day, one of the two. Again, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to see where this is going. Um, and if I don't do a video before that, I hope everybody has a good 
holy period and a happy new year. Yeah. Literally, it's, it's raining, but it's not hailstones, but it's just little, little bit of size. Am I going to call it snow? Maybe. But the mist is all just coming in. Nah, not going to call it snow. Light hailstones, maybe, but not snow. Yeah, take it back. It's snowing. What is it, ice? Weird. It's like little shards of ice. Yeah, calling it now. It's snowing. Ah, dear. A day late, but nonetheless, it's snowing. Right, need to get a shift on because the roads are notoriously bad around here. They don't get gritted. <laughs> 